Today we'll be talking about industrialization and urbanization in America, chapter two, the railroads. Now nothing was more important to American industrial growth than railroads. Americans have been building railroads since the early 1830s. By the start of the Civil War in 1861, there were already more than 30,000 miles of railroad track in the United States. However, this did not work as a national system of transportation. Most of the track was not connected. Two thirds of the track were in the Northeast and Midwest and the South had some, but the mountains and open spaces in the far West had nearly none. Uh, another problem they were having in the early days was that railroad cards made for one company would not necessarily fit on the railroads of another company. This was because they used different types of tracks or tracks with a different gauge. In the beginning, when they were using railroads, shipping goods hundreds of miles would require multiple stops and changes of trains. So if you were shipping something from New York to Chicago, it could take two to three weeks to arrive because it would have to be changing trains multiple times. But after the Civil War, huge amounts of construction took place in the West where they began the Great Transcontinental Line. The federal government provided free land and loans of money to encourage companies and investors to build the railroad across the United States. One of the men who made this possible was Cornelius Vanderbilt. Now Cornelius had already been making his fortune in shipping and he decided that he would start with a small line that went between New York City and Chicago. He decided that he would convert all of the track in his area to the same gauge so that anything that was being connected to it would be able to be used together. This meant that rather than taking a day to move the freight, um, it could be, um, or even longer than a day. Now it could take less than a day and the freight would not have to change trains. Now Vanderbilt's company was called the New York Central and by the 1870s there were railroads growing towards many of the different cities throughout the United States. And all the other railroad companies agreed to adopt a standard gauge of 48 inches so that all track could be used and connected together. One of the things the growth of the railroad industry did for the United States was it created a whole lot of new jobs and new industries. Uh, the lumber industry grew a lot because bridges, wagons, fuel, telegraph poles all needed to be used to help create these new uh, railroad railroads. Uh, and then also they needed railroad tires, um, ties, sorry, railroad bridges and carriages. Then also it created new industry for steel because they started using the steel for the rails and the engines and the train cars. Coal was needed to power the steam engines and it also created a whole new set of jobs in things like clearing land or laying track or building and running the trains and supplying things that went for the railroad. Railroads helped get raw materials to factories in distant markets and Finally, large-scale industrial production became possible in the United States. As railroads became more efficient, they also were able to lower transportation costs, which made things cheaper for customers. This meant companies could start to compete to offer better prices for their goods and services. And one of the things that we talk about here is called a market economy. Now a market economy is an economic system in which prices are determined by competition among businesses and not by the government. And we already talked about that when we did the industrialization unit previously. Now, one of the things that in, was interesting that happened at this time is that as manufacturing companies could um, compete, they were lowering their costs and they were becoming more efficient, goods were moving further and further across the United States. And so to help alleviate some of the problems they were having with different time zones, the American railroad system forced the introduction of what we now call the standard time zones. And you can see on the picture that there's maps of the different time zones across the United States that they were using to help people determine what time it was in each of the countries where the trains would be arriving.